Nowadays, it's easier than ever to connect with each other. People are just a call, text, or video call away. And yet, sometimes we still feel alone. Even when we're in a crowded room, even when we have neighbors or family members or friends right next door, it can feel like we're left to fend for ourselves. That's how the three sons of Gloria Williams felt. On October 24, 2021, a 911 operator heard the frightened voice of a 15-year-old boy in Houston, Texas. The boy told the operator that his mother had left him and his younger brothers alone in an apartment for several months. What he said next was chilling. One of his brothers was dead in the other room and had been there for almost a year. Welcome to another episode of Killer Bites. Today, we're talking about how the horrific murder of an eight-year-old boy was carried out by his own mother and her boyfriend. Police were dispatched to a West Harris County apartment after emergency services received a distressing phone call. When they arrived, they were met with a horrific scene. They walked into a room with soiled carpet, no furniture, and cockroaches crawling everywhere. They met three boys, the 15-year-old who had placed the call, a 10-year-old, and a seven-year-old. These kids were in rough shape. They were malnourished, the clothes on their backs were in tatters, and police could see bruises covering their bodies. One of the boys had a broken jaw, so he couldn't even eat properly, but it didn't stop there. As they made their way deeper into the apartment, it was just as it had been described on the 911 call. In the bedroom, covered by a blanket in the corner of the room, was eight-year-old Kendrick Lee's skeletal remains. At this moment, all anyone could think was what had happened to these kids, where was their mother, and who killed this little boy? Police began their investigations, and within a few days, they were able to detain the prime suspects, the mother, Gloria Williams, and her boyfriend, Brian Coulter. That's right the police suspected the mother, which seems outrageous, but as they continued examining the evidence, more and more gruesome details came into light that pointed to the truth. Gloria Williams let her own son die at the hand of her boyfriend, and they knew they were guilty. In fact, Gloria and Brian were arrested in the parking lot of a public library where they were trying to look up any news reports involving their names. Isn't that ironic? As more evidence was collected, the police learned this. Gloria Williams was the mother of six. She had two daughters, neither of whom had much contact with the family, instead living with relatives, and her four boys, now three. She was a single mother, and though there were no open child protective services investigations open about the family at the time, Gloria did have a history. In fact, CPS had reports of abuse dating all the way back to 2015. Later in the investigation, a paternal grandmother came forward to speak about the Williams family. Melody Robinson was the grandmother of one of the daughters and had known the mother since 2005, when Gloria began dating her son. When Melody and Gloria first met, Gloria only had two children. They moved in with the Robinson family and Melody told reporters that Gloria was never fit to be a mom. She described her as unstable and easily manipulated. The relationship was brief. After they broke up, the Robinsons didn't hear from Gloria. It was actually Gloria's mother, Hazel, who called to let them know that Gloria had given birth to a baby girl and Melody's son was the father. That's when Melody decided to step in. Melody cared for her surprise granddaughter at only two weeks old like she was her own child. Eventually though, Gloria said she wanted her child back in her home and Melody didn't have legal custody. Gloria took her daughter back and Melody didn't hear from them for another two years. When she did, Gloria was back in a relationship with one of her former partners, the father of her oldest son, and she was pregnant with her fourth child. She asked Melody if she would help out with childcare again, and that's when Melody saw her second chance. Melody was reunited with her granddaughter once again, and this time she wasn't going to let her go again. Years went by and Melody's concern for the other kids grew. Gloria went on to have two more kids. She struggled to care for her other daughter and now four sons. Melody helped out wherever she could, inviting the family over for play dates or birthday parties, but often her invitations were met with radio silence from Gloria. At some point, Gloria married a man who would later pass away, and that's when she met Brian, whom Melody recalls as 
the man who would change their lives forever. When Gloria and Brian first started seeing each other, the oldest daughter lived with them and her four brothers. Although neither daughters directly involved in the case, the oldest daughter would later say she remembered her mom's boyfriend beating up her younger brothers. When that happened, she tried to stand up against Brian, but Gloria defended him. Eventually, the daughter was kicked out of the house by her own mother. Can you believe that? This girl tried to protect her family only to be betrayed by her own family. She lived on the streets for over a year after that and ended up in the hospital. It was then that CPS contacted Melody and the girl went to live with her and was reunited with her other sister. Melanie said that although she wasn't related to Gloria's oldest daughter, she felt a special bond for her and both girls had lived with her for several years. But even after she was safe, the daughter couldn't forget about her brothers. She couldn't forget that they were still trapped by her mom and her boyfriend. She tried to keep in contact with her brothers, often FaceTiming them, but even that was difficult because Gloria wouldn't always let them talk to each other. And when they did talk, they never mentioned anything about the body in the other room. These boys were alone, afraid, and living in complete fear. Court hearings and legal procedures continued. The more authorities found out about the situation, the more horrendous it became. Police suspect Kendrick was murdered sometime in November of 2020, just before Thanksgiving. Not only that, it was discovered that one of the brothers was actually in the room when it happened. In an interview, he described a horrifying account of what happened. He said Brian was hitting Kendrick all over his body. His eyes were black and he stopped blinking. Put yourself in his shoes. He just watched someone beat his brother to death. He was terrified that he or one of his other brothers would be next, and his mother did nothing to stop it. In fact, she sided with the murderer. He felt like there was no one left to trust. After Kendrick's death, Gloria and Brian moved out and lived in an entirely different apartment 25 minutes away. It's like they weren't even willing to face what they had done. With investigations underway, police looked at both Gloria's and Brian's social media accounts. Gloria's Instagram account had only a few posts. At first, it was simply pictures of food she cooked or a meal she was eating. There was a single photo that featured three of her sons and one mentioning one of her daughters. After that, nearly every one of her posts were either pictures or captions about Brian, which she referred to as my husband, despite the fact that they weren't legally married. It's almost like when Brian was with her, nothing else mattered to her. Brian's account, on the other hand, painted a grim picture. He had numerous photos and videos about smoking and drinking. They were two things that were obviously important to him, that and flashy jewelry. And okay, I'm not saying anyone who smokes or drinks is a bad person, but the boys recounted numerous other instances in which their mom's boyfriend would attack them and said the abuse was more frequent after he'd been In another post, Brian showed off a diamond pinky ring. It was the same ring that the boys mentioned because he would wear it on purpose when he beat them because it caused deeper bruising. This man was going out of his way just to abuse these children. According to the boys, the couple would occasionally stop by to drop off junk food, during which the boyfriend would continue to beat them. They were left defenseless and terrified. When they met with the lead investigator, they finally felt safe again. They actually hugged him, they were so relieved. It wouldn't be until the following year that Gloria and Brian would face trial. On Tuesday, January 18th, 2022, Gloria and Brian stood in front of a grand jury in Harris County. Brian Coulter was charged with capital murder. This applies when the murder occurs under specific circumstances, including when the victim is under the age of 10. In the state of Texas, capital murder is punishable by life in prison without parole or the death penalty. The mother, on the other hand, was charged with three indictments. The first was injury to a child. This is when a person intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly caused a child who was 14 years old or younger to suffer a bodily injury. Gloria's second charge was for serious bodily injury. Normally, this is delegated as a second degree charge. However, because it was done to a family member, her own son, the court elevated it to a first degree felony. And finally, she was charged with tampering with a corpse. Again, in a typical case, this is a third degree felony, but the penalties involving evidence that is a human corpse are even more severe in the state of Texas. In fact, even if the person has no physical contact with the corpse and simply knows about it and doesn't report it, 
they can be charged in the second degree. Both Coulter and Williams were put behind bars and had bonds set at $1 million and $900,000 respectively. In the meantime, the boys tried to move on with their lives. They were kept together and placed in foster care. The brother with a broken jaw had to receive surgery because his injuries had been untreated for so long. And they talked to therapists and counselors and representatives. Everyone had the same question. How did they go so long living with their brother's body without telling anyone? Maybe it's because the boys didn't feel like they had anyone to turn to. They didn't have many authority figures in their lives since the oldest daughter's father died years before. Kendrick's own dad was also deceased and Gloria's mother was in the hospital being treated for a stroke and had no idea any of this was going on. But what about Melody, you might ask, or the sisters they were FaceTiming? Or what about the neighbors? Why didn't they ask questions when one of the boys would knock on the door, skinny as a rail, asking for a little bit of food? The answer is plain and simple. They were scared. Their mother, someone they should have been able to trust and rely on, had turned her back on them. And maybe it felt as if the world had to. This case is a chilling reminder that sometimes victims can be suffering in silence. They might be too afraid to ask for help, so it's important to remember the adage, if you see something, say something. Anyone can report suspected child abuse or neglect. Kendrick's murder happened during the initial lockdowns caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. People were instructed to stay in their homes and avoid going out into public spaces. While these measures were put into effect to protect the interests of public health, it also meant people were spending more time behind closed doors where the possibility of domestic and child abuse could occur out of public eye. It's scary to think that these boys were too afraid to ask for help. They felt like they had to deal with it themselves, that no one was on their side. Let this be a reminder that we all have to look out for one another, have each other's backs. And if you see something, you should say something. Whether you are a bystander who sees it or a child who's experiencing it, you can call the National Child Abuse Hotline, which is available 24-7 at 1-800-422-4453. You can also visit www.childcare.gov to learn about more childcare, health, and safety resources and state-specific instructions about how to report violations. The Children's Bureau also releases information about how to recognize signs and symptoms of child abuse. For example, showing sudden changes in behavior or school performance, not receiving help for physical or medical problems brought to the parent's attention, having learning problems or difficulty concentrating that aren't related to specific physical or psychological causes, showing behavior that is watchful as though preparing for something bad to happen, lacking adult supervision, being overly compliant, passive, or withdrawn, coming to school or other activities early, staying late, or not wanting to go home, and especially being reluctant around a particular person. I'm your host, Lindsay. Thanks for watching Killer Bites.